Today I've got quite a few stories to cover, including a very interesting interview with AMD. So let's just get right to it. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD's next gen Ryzen 8000 APU has finally been spotted. And let's just say that it effectively confirms quite a few things that we've been seeing with rumors. Starting things off, as you can see down here, this is actually the integrated GPU version of this and we can see that it comes with 1024 cores. And as video cards points out, that means we're looking at 16 compute units. And of course, this has actually been rumored for a little while now. Currently, their APUs only go up to 12 compute units, so 16 is at least a decent jump from that. Now, with that said, don't forget that we've also been hearing about a Strix Halo Edition that's rumored to come with, I believe it was up to 40 compute units. So an absolute monster of an APU. And as I've said in the past, I can confirm through one of my contacts that I have with AMD that this actually is being tested. This is a real thing. Now, obviously there is a chance that AMD ends up scrapping it and doesn't release it, but it is definitely in the works. It's not just some wild rumor out of nowhere. But this right here is more of the regular version of the APUs and they come with 16 compute units. Not only that, but when we actually look at the CPU itself, you can see engineering sample with stepping STX 1-A0, and this right here further proves this is obviously something we've never seen before. Uh, really quick, TDP of 45 watts, but then you can see performance core, four cores and eight threads, then efficiency core, eight cores, and 16 threads. So obviously this is not an Intel APU because it actually has hyper-threading. We obviously know that AMD is doing things a little bit differently for their efficiency cores. They are gonna have hyper-threading. They're effectively identical to the P-Core. They're just a little cut down, not an entirely different architecture like we see with Intel. So ultimately this is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU. Something, as I've said, has been rumored for a little while now. Well, now it looks to be absolutely true. And next up for today, I have a very important story that I really just think 100% goes to show the absolute importance of competition. Even if you're a diehard NVIDIA fanboy and you just love NVIDIA, you hate AMD, you still have to want AMD to do well. And the reason for that is because if AMD isn't serious competition for NVIDIA, they can just do effectively whatever they want with their GPUs. If they're the only ones offering it, sure. If they go completely wild with the prices, some people will absolutely not buy it. But if they're the only option, there are going to be some people and they obviously have to weigh the value of this, you know, if enough people stop buying it, even at absurd prices, they're still making less than they would if they drastically cut the price, but they have to kind of do this math. But if they have zero competition, they can really run away with the prices with a ton of people still buying them. So I say all of this to say that thanks to AMD's launch of their upcoming cars, the 7700 XT and 7800 XT, NVIDIA has lowered prices. And you can actually see that uh, it's a couple cards right here of, these are the 4060 Ti, you can see, the, and these are more of the bare bones GPUs, but there's two that NVIDIA fairly quickly lowered the price to. This right here, the ASUS 4060 Ti, and then we have the MSI Ventus 4060 Ti, both have been dropped by $50 in anticipation of AMD's launch. Of course, this one more specifically being for the 7700 XT. Oh, and I will actually get to those in just a second. There is a leak on that, but keep in mind that I'll have these uh, links down in the description as well as the 7800 XT and 7700 XT for when those are released. They will be affiliate links, so they don't cost you anything more, but they help the channel out. Regardless, as I've been saying, this just proves how important competition is. Even if you love Nvidia, you want AMD to do well, because then you can buy your Nvidia GPUs for even cheaper. And of course, the same goes for AMD. If AMD completely crushes Nvidia, blows them out of the water, none of their GPUs are worth it, never will be, no matter the price, that kind of thing, they basically don't have the competition at all, AMD will up their prices as well. So whether you love AMD or love Nvidia, 
you do want the other to do well as well because it helps everyone. And next up, we have a very interesting story. This is actually an interview from Club 386 with AMD's Radeon head, Scott Herkelman. And he actually discussed quite a few things here. There are three specific points that I want to go over, and they're definitely really interesting. Starting things off, Club 386 asks, they said, ray tracing performance remains below NVIDIA's comparable cards. Assuming this continues with the 7800 and 7700 XT, what tools does AMD have to combat this apparent weakness? And he states, he says, I think we still have the lead in performance per dollar, yet we do take ray tracing performance into consideration when doing our price calculations. So he's just basically saying, oh, well, we're, we may not completely win at ray tracing overall, just be significantly better in performance, but we do calculate that in our performance per dollar and we win there. But the interesting part is where he says, we just have to do better on future generations, making sure we have the right architecture for efficient ray tracing. Basically he's saying that they are really working on it, but we're gonna have to wait and see. Basically he's saying that they are really working on it and it should be coming for future generations. And this actually isn't the first time we've heard something like this from AMD. And don't forget that we've also been seeing leaks about next-gen GPUs being amazingly good at ray tracing. So it definitely sounds like we can expect some really good ray tracing performance out of future generations. Now, the next thing that they say, the next thing I want to go over is actually the next thing that was asked. It says, energy efficiency also appears weaker than NVIDIA on paper. RTX 4070, for example, has a 200 watt TGP compared to 245 watt for the 7700 XT. Is this an area of concern? And this is where he says something pretty wild. He says, we have a company initiative in driving good performance per watt across our portfolio of products. We look at performance per watt on every chart when bringing all chips to market. In notebooks, it matters greatly. In desktop, however, it matters, but not to everyone. And he's kind of trying to cushion this blow, but what he's saying is, well, in notebooks, it's really important. It's important to the consumer, but in desktop, uh, not so much. You can actually see that Tom's Hardware uh, also says something similar about this quote. It says, AMD says gamers don't care about GPU power consumption. And like I said, he is, of course, trying to kind of cushion this blow. He then goes on to say there are some people who are really concerned about power. Others don't care as much, but it certainly sounds like what he's saying is, well, no one really cares on the desktop side. Guess I would just say, what do you think? <laughs> Let me know about that down in the comments below. And the last thing he said, you can see right here, it said still no sign of 12 VH power on any Radeon graphics card. Now this, what they're referring to is that new 16 pin connector on Nvidia's GPUs. And they said, is this a burning issue for you? And his answer, once again, very interesting. He says, we specifically for 7900 series and 7600, we didn't plan on the new power cable, but the 7800 and 7700 did have a plan for it. He then goes on to say we removed it and that was a purposeful removal. You shouldn't blame end users for issues you have. Wow. So, um, shots fired there. He's obviously referring to the fact that in that Gamers Nexus video, they ended up finding out that a lot of the issues people were having with those 16 pin connectors, with them effectively burning up and melting, it was actually because they didn't have it inserted all the way. And he's referring to the fact that, well, you're, you're still blaming consumers. Now, I will actually say a few new instances have been happening where they claim that it was absolutely inserted all the way. And I will say, if you follow this channel, and of course, if you love PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to GamerMelt. But if you have been following this channel, you know that they actually have updated that connector and are already putting it in newer GPUs. So personally, I think that that kind of proves that it isn't just a user issue. And I will say at least here, Scott Herkelman holds nothing back and goes right after him. He says, you should catch and own any problems just like we did with the vapor chamber issue. I was all over social media because I felt like it was AMD's problem and I was going to own it. So yeah, he really goes after Nvidia pretty hard there. He then says, until this power issue is cleaned up and there's good confidence it's working correctly for end users, 
that's where you'll start to see us incorporate it into our planning. So there you go. It sounds like AMD could soon be including that connector in future GPUs, but they're going to wait until all of the issues have been fixed. And lastly for today, the first benchmarks on AMD's RX 7800 XT, and it doesn't say it right here, but it is down there, their RX 7700 XT GPUs. So obviously these were announced just recently, but we're finally starting to see third-party benchmarks. And you can actually see, so the first one with the 7800 XT, it was actually uh, leaked. These are both 3D Mark Time Spy, but that one was leaked by Copite 7 Kimmy. Then the 7700 XT was leaked by this leaker as well. And as you can see, starting things off, we have the RX 7700 XT, and here you can see that it not only beats the 6700 XT, but it also beats the 6800 non XT. Definitely fairly impressive. It does way better than the 4060 Ti. Obviously this one we're talking 13,000 versus 17,000. Then when we move up to the 7800 XT, one thing you will notice is that it's actually lower than the 6800 XT. And obviously that is a bit disappointing, but this is just a synthetic time spy score. I highly doubt that it's gonna lose to the 6800 XT in regular gaming, but of course, don't forget that it does have fewer cores than last gen 6800 XT. We're talking 60 CUs versus 72, but still, I really wouldn't expect this to lose in games. It'll probably be very close, probably just past the 6800 XT or right along with it. Either way, it definitely beats out the 4070, and it actually starts getting close to the 4070 Ti. Still, it is pretty wild that a brand new GPU, a next-gen GPU, is right at the performance of last-gen. But really, given the fact that it still looks really good, don't forget that we're talking $500 for the 7800 XT, and it beats out the 4070, which is $100 more. So really, I think this shows how bad NVIDIA's RTX 4000 series lineup is, and also pretty much all of the next-gen cards. Either way, don't forget that I will have affiliate links to these cards down in the description below. So while that does it for today, what do you think about the RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day.